Hi everyone and welcome to Conspectus. I'm Dr. Kesham Lothra and you can get in touch with me at metaembryology at gmail.com. Today's topic of discussion is prioritizing embryos. This is in tune with our series, How I Select Embryos for Transfer. Now we know that embryo selection is quite subjective. I might grade embryos differently, you might grade them differently. And it's so subjective that even if it's the same embryo, we don't know whether we're seeing the same things or not. There are certain markers which are available for improving our selection, like checking for early cleavage, like looking at the pronuclear morphology, like looking at the orientation of the blastomeres. But again, it becomes very difficult. But when you're talking about reducing multiple pregnancies, we have to reduce the number of embryos that we transfer and the only way of reducing the number of embryos that we transfer is by selecting the best kind of ones so that we don't compromise on the results. Now the first thing that's very important as far as assessment of the embryo is concerned is to know the proper timeline of the embryo. The point of insemination is stated as 0 hours. 16 to 18 hours post in insemination, you will start seeing the pronucleus. It's the best time to actually grade the pronucleus and also look at the nucleolus inside. Around 25 to 27 hours post it, you will see a two cell stage. 43 to 45 hours, you will see a four cell stage. 67 to 69 hours, you'll see an eight cell stage. 90 hours, you'll see a modular. And around 115 to 117 hours after insemination, you should be able to see an expanded blastocyst. These time points are very very important and they have been stated in the recent consensus which has also come up and this is a slide which is depicting the same. Now when I look at the pronucleuses, the first thing that you have to look at is that they should be of an equal size and then you want to look at the alignment of the nucleoli and you also want to look at the number of nucleoli and there uh, both the pronucleuses should have the same number of nucleoli. Once you have such such a type of pronucleus, you would actually take this as a grade 1 pronucleus. This also is a fantastic example of a grade 1 pronucleus. So grade 1 is basically a symmetrical pronucleus, grade 2 is non-symmetrical and a grade 3 is abnormal where you have one large pronucleus or they are disjointed or there is a micro pronuclei or there are three pronucleus etc etc. Coming to cleavage stage, now we generally talk about uh, blastomeres being equal in size as one of the important parameters by which we choose an embryo, but that's not always true. A blastomere will only be equal in size when it completes a cell division. So maybe two cell stage you have equal blastomeres, four cell stage you will have equal blastomeres and eight cell stage you will have equal blastomeres. So that's that signifying the completion of the cell division cycle. But if you have embryos which are in between, like a three cell embryo where one blastomere is large and two blastomeres are equal in size and smaller, that embryo might still be in the phase of completing its second division. And that is why it should not be classified as a normal wait for a little time and allow it to complete its division. Right? Similarly, it will be for five cell, six cell, seven cell stages. And that is why it's very very important to actually go through those time points very very precisely and only choose embryos or prioritize embryos based on the timeline that the embryo is following. A grade 1 or a good grade embryo is classified as an embryo which has a state specific cell size, does not have multinucleation and has less than 10% of fragmentation. A grade 2 embryo is classified as having 10 to 25% of fragmentation, state specific cell size for majority of cells, again no evidence of multinucleation. And a grade 3 embryo or a poor quality embryo is classified as an embryo which has more than 25% fragmentation, cell size is not state specific and there is evidence of multinucleation. So this is how you basically grade a cleavage stage embryo. For blastocysts, the grading system has changed. So from the Gardner system that everyone was following, we now follow the consensus system, which basically instead of having six grades, we have five or we have four stages of development, where you have grade one, which is an early blastocyst, we have grade two, which is a blastocyst, 
grade 3 is a expanded blast and grade 4 is a hatched or a hatching blast cells. the inner cell mass 1 2 and 3 so whatever was a b and c in the gardener system is now 1 2 and 3 one is basically prominent easily discernible inner cell mass with many cells that are tightly compacted to each other two is easily discernible inner cell mass with many cells that are loosely grouped and three is basically difficult to discern very few cells Trophectodom again instead of ABC we have 1, 2 and 3 where 1 is many cells forming a cohesive epithelium, 2 is few cells with a loose epithelium and 3 is very few cells. That's how a very good quality blastocyst would look like and now this blastocyst will be classified as, as state specific so we go so this is an expanded blastocyst so it will become 3, 1 and 1 so 3 for the expanded blastocyst we are seeing the thinning of zona pellucida so that's why it's called as an expanded blastocyst. We have a nice compact inner cell mass, lots of cells, so one and lots of uh, trophectodermal cells forming a nice cohesive layer, again one. So three, one, one, this becomes the new classification of the blastocysts. Now why all of this was important because, because we now see that even if you have a good quality cleavage stage embryo, we don't know whether it's going to form a blastocyst or not. And Again, the quality of blastocysts that might form from a good quality cleavage stage embryo is also something that is not we're not sure of. And that is why we have to track each and every parameter. So we start right from the pronuclear morphology and early cleavage as the best predictors of um, blastulation. And then we follow the embryo till blastocysts and then try and transfer one blastocyst or maximum two blastocysts if needed. A good quality cleavage stage embryo which has the perfect size of blastomeres, no signs of fragmentation etc. will have the highest implantation rates. If you have a little bit of fragmentation, the implantation rate is lower. But the problem is that if you have uneven cells, that's when the implantation rate starts to fall low. Again, if you have visible nucleoli single uh, within each blastomere, the chances of implantation rate is much higher. Whereas if you have multinucleation, the implantation rates are going to be much lower. So these are important points that you need to consider as far as embryo selection is concerned as well as prioritizing your embryos for transfer is concerned. So look for early cleavage. Look for the number of cells on day 2 and day 3, whether the uh, size of the blastomeres are equal or not. Very importantly, look for the nucleoli within the blastomeres. And this can only be done if you are using a higher power magnification. So this would not be as evident on, on your stereosome microscope. Try and use your micromanipulator microscope for doing this assessment. And also look for the fragmentation. Most importantly, synchrony and also the timelines here are very, very important. There are some predictors for blastulation or blastocyst development. And that depends on the number of oocytes that have been retrieved and fertilized. So if you're having a good fertilization rate, then the chances of having good blastulation is higher. Look at the PN size and symmetry. Good PNs signify that your blastulation is going to be higher. Good early cleavage or signs of early cleavage again signify good blastulation. So try and segregate those embryos early on. And also the number of good top quality 8 cell embryos on day 3 is another good sign. So if you have about 50 to 60 percent top quality embryos on day 3, leave them for blastulation and then transfer blastocysts. So that's something that we tend to follow in our laboratory as well as giving us good results. So this was a little bit about uh, choosing the right embryo or actually prioritizing embryos for transfer in this series. We're going to be talking about a few advances in the upcoming lectures. So please uh, come back and see those as well. And if you have any questions, shoot an email to me at mbrg.gmail.com. Thank you so much.